Thank you, Menachem. Uh, I want to call uh, another Menachem, Menachem Yari, uh, who together with uh, Israel Uman uh, is actually uh, the founder of the Rationality Center. Menachem, um, please come over and uh, Boker Tov, good morning. A couple of months ago, Eyal, uh, who's just uh, introduced two Menachems, he can, you, you, there is about seven more that you can, at this, at this university that you can. In any case, he came to me and he, he said, uh, we'd like you to speak at the uh, 20th anniversary conference of the Center for the Study of Rationality. And I said, well, uh, but I don't uh, have a paper. Uh, so Eyal said, that's all right. I have the paper that you're going to be speaking about, a very Soviet approach. And uh, so he handed me the paper that uh, I'm going to speak about right now, and here it is. There it is. Now it's in Hebrew, number one. It's handwritten, number two. And it says, tuta, which means a draft. So it's a draft written in Hebrew and handwritten that I'm supposed to talk about. Well, what is this, by the way? Uh, this is uh, the charter of the Center for the Study of Rationality. There isn't any other document on file setting down the uh, basics and the fundamentals of the Center and its, uh, and its philosophy, so to speak, uh, except this one. And uh, why did uh, Hey, I'll think that I should be the one presenting it. It's because I, I was the one writing it. It's my handwriting, I'm afraid, that you have up there. And uh, it's dated 25th of April, 1990. And it's a uh, proposal that was submitted or was to be submitted uh, and eventually was uh, a couple of weeks after this was written. Uh, to the then rector of the Hebrew University, uh, Yoram ben Porat, a very close friend of mine, and uh, I'm mentioning that because uh, in some way the center was uh, the outcome of very uh, close and frequent discussions that he and I had uh, following some events uh, that occurred in the late 1980s, mainly in the Department of Economics of the university. And the events were, by and large, uh, negative. They were sort of dark clouds uh, gathering over the horizon, even, even closer, of the department. They consisted of uh, uh, many resignations, uh, and in fact, resignations of young faculty, young promising young faculty. That was one thing, and as I recall, leaves of absence. Uh, many uh, of the uh, uh, leading, let's, just, let's say, members of the departments were out on leave. The rector himself was a member of the department. Uh, there was uh, the... the uh, governor of the Bank of Israel, who was a member of the department. There was the uh, head of the Institute for Advanced Studies that was a member of the department. So they were all not on hand, or largely not on hand. And uh, there was a, uh, 
rather deplorable decline in morale in the Department of Economics, which had been uh, or was, was reputed to have had quite a, uh, an illustrious existence before that. And uh, of course, that, that is a concern to the rector of the university, and he began uh, discussions with friends, and among them uh, yours truly, uh, as to what to do. And the constraint that he brought as to what to do was that you can't hire maybe one person you can hire to uh, alleviate or to redress this thing, uh, but you can't uh, propose uh, seven new appointments uh, to rescue the departments. That, that's out of the question. So what do you do? You have your own resources, uh, human resources, here at the university, and somehow you have, you've got to use those to, uh, to create a, a kind of uh, new spark that would set, hopefully, a, uh, a new fire underneath the uh, doings of, uh, of the economics department and its uh, affiliates and the uh, various affiliates and partners at the university. Uh, and so uh, uh, the, the idea then came up uh, in, in those discussions of creating a center for the study of rational behavior, it was called at the start, when, in those discussions, Center for the Study of Rational Behavior. Well, later on, this was uh, changed to Center for the Study of Rationality, uh, uh, that being thought to be more uh, glitzy, kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's not very glitzy even that, this way, but uh, uh, so that's how the term uh, Center for the Study of Rationality came about, and, uh, and the rector asked uh, uh, me and to recruit some colleagues and together to submit a proposal. And this uh, is the draft proposal that he read. Uh, we thought that uh, we should uh, first have him read the draft before we change into a final uh, version or upgrade into a final version. And uh, that this draft, for all we know, is, is all there is. It never went into uh, a, any further versions. And the rector then said, uh, I mean, it's, not, it's no good for you or for you and uh, Johnny Allman to be the signatories, you have to have some young people joining you in the, proposing this, uh, uh, in proposing this uh, change or this uh, development at the university. And so uh, we uh, recruited two of our very young faculty at the time, uh, Moti, who is here, and. Uh, Sadly, one who is not here uh, with us, um, Itamar Pitovsky, who uh, sadly uh, uh, passed away about two years ago. And the four of us, uh, Johnny and Moti and uh, Itamar and myself, submitted this to the, uh, to the rector who then uh, went on to uh, begin to implement this. And I want to show you, uh, and it's really quite surprising, the closeness uh, that, you can, uh, uh, that you can recognize between what's written here and what actually happened in the course of the last 20 years. I mean, we were pretty good at predicting, I guess, uh, what could be done and what couldn't. But uh, notice, uh, uh, you know, the various uh, faculties where we thought there was activity having to do with rational behavior, which we thought could be uh, brought together into one center. And there is, uh, in the faculty of the humanities, uh, that's the third category going down from the top, uh, 
There is something that's crossed out, and that's uh, theoretical linguistics, uh, which was in this, uh, uh, which was in this draft to begin with, and as I was writing this, the person in uh, uh, theoretical linguistic, there was only one, resigned. So I had to cross out this line, and, it, and, the, and the faculty of uh, humanities is here represented by philosophy only. He resigned from the Hebrew University as this was being discussed. And, uh, so the, uh, I won't uh, have you read this, uh, uh, this curious handwriting, but just uh, to take you to the end where uh, uh, here we have the uh, goals uh, uh, of the proposed center and <coughs> they're very much, uh, I think, uh, what was actually uh, uh, achieved later on, uh, affiliation, even uh, and who the members would be, and uh, the, we also thought that there would be associate members or uh, uh, members who are not uh, actually present on the premises, but uh, but active in the uh, in the various seminars, etc., and availing themselves of the various services of the center and guests and also governance, uh, director, uh, academic committee, uh, w uh, administration, um, administrative uh, anchoring, uh, that's uh, space, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And here is the here is the, uh, the, the, the final page with the signatories, uh, uh, the, the four signatories of whom, as I said, two were, uh, uh, two were young uh, researchers at the time. Uh, and, uh, and this uh, document was submitted to uh, the rector, who very quickly uh, moved up to becoming president. Very soon after this was submitted to the rector at the time, Yoram ben Porat, uh, Yoram himself uh, was nominated and, 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 and uh, immediately afterwards elected to president to be to the presidency of the Hebrew University became president, and he set up the Center for Rationality as president and not as rector. And when he became president, uh, of course, a new rector had to be uh, 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 anointed, and the new rector uh, was brought in very uh, uh, quickly from Paris. His name is and was Hanoch Gutfreund, and he's here with us. And Hanoch, uh, Hanoch's uh, contribution to this process of setting up the center was really uh, crucial, because Hanoch, I think, even before you uh, you came, before you left Paris to come here to take on to take on the office of the rectorship. Uh, he uh, actually managed to uh, secure the first grant that made the uh, that made uh, the opening of the center possible. And uh, I'd like to uh, call on Hanoch Gutfreund to say a few words, maybe uh, uh, in. Uh, in completion of uh, what I must have uh, omitted here. Thank you very much. So I'm, <coughs> I'm invited uh, now to speak to you as a historian. And history is sometimes anecdotal. And uh, what I shall do now, I shall share with you uh, 
some of my recollections of those days uh, and some of the anecdotal contents of this history. Now, since we are talking about the history and we are marking 20 years of the existence of the center, it means that there was a beginning. And the beginning was not a Big Bang event in the sense that in this case, it is very meaningful to ask what happened before. And uh, Menachem, in his scholarly style and fashion, told you already about what happened before. I vividly remember this manifesto or charter, as he referred to it. And uh, uh, let me tell you again, let me add my recollection of Yoram Ben Porat in this context. Uh, next year, we shall mark the 20th anniversary of his uh, tragic death. Uh, this week, two days ago, we granted uh, the annual president's uh, fellowship to a young uh, achieving scientist at the university in the name of Yoram Ben Porat, and we had another opportunity to talk about his personality and his contributions. And uh, as I said, as said Menachem emphasized, before, what happened before is at Yoram was elected president in 1990. And before that, when he was elected president, he was already an established scientist, one of the pioneers in the emerging field of the economics of human resources, world renowned. He was already a leader, not only at the university, but a leader in the entire system of higher education in Israel. And that was a time when the university, thanks to Yoram and the late president under whom Yoram served as rector, Professor Amnon Fazi, was literally rescued by a heroic effort of both of them from a very deep financial crisis. And when Yoram became president, he had the ambition to move ahead fast, to take the university to the 21st century, and to establish new innovative frameworks of excellent academic activity. And so that was the context. So that's one thing that happened. Menachem saved me from referring to what happened before the, be before the beginning at the uh, Department of Economics. Uh, I wouldn't know what sensitivities still uh, last from those days, but there was one positive thing that happened in the Department of Economics before that, and that was that there was already an understanding and an agreement that a young scholar from Tel Aviv, Sergio Hart, who is here, would join our ranks. And then, of course, the most important thing that happened is the concept that was formed mainly by the vision, the experience of uh, Johnny Auman and, uh, and Menachem Yari. And then the last thing that happened at that time, that I was elected rector. Now, uh, Menachem uh, exaggerated. Anybody who would have been elected rector at that time would have done it, because all the groundwork was prepared. I simply happened to be there, and therefore now I am in a position to tell you a little more about the first days. Now, you should realize that this was not an obvious undertaking within a university. And it was not enthusiastically embraced by everybody at the university. The fact that we are creating a new academic 
entity that transpires boundaries of traditional disciplines and departments, the fact that it is not only a virtual entity, but a real physical presence, the fact that there will be members of the faculty who, would ha who will have two offices, one here and one in their apartment, was not received by everybody with enthusiasm to say the least, and there were even members, the Department of Economics, who then approached me and, and accused me of destroying the Department of Economics. Uh, now coming back to the first days, when I was elected rector, the first thing that Joram told me was that this is my main mission, my first mission, my foremost important mission is to establish this center and he showed me that document that you just saw. And let me just tell you, because that's important to understand the context, that at the same time, at the university, there was another initiative, academic initiative, totally bottom up. And that was an initiative to establish a center in computational neuroscience. This was an emerging field in brain research that brought together physicists and biologists and neurobiologists and clinicians and, uh, and psychologists into one framework to study, to study the brain. And I have always compared these two initiatives because they were both innovative. They were both uh, inherently interdisciplinary, as much interdisciplinary as they can be. And the difference between the two is the fact that in one case, we have one phenomenon, the brain, and you bring in scholars from all the disciplines that are relevant to study this one phenomenon. And in the other case, you have one discipline or one method, the game theory, na namely game theory. And you bring in scholars from all the phenomenal from all the phenomenologies on the academic arena where game theory can, um, has something to say. And Joram embraced both initiatives wholeheartedly with great enthusiasm and my mission. That was my mission. Now let's say a few words about funding because this is the anecdotal part of it. At that time when I was uh, on a sabbatical in Paris, I met a businessman in Paris who was a self-educated Spinozist and uh, he was very generous to us and uh, I developed friend close relationship with that gentleman. He founded what is later called the Horowitz Foundation which supported us mightily first projects at the Hebrew University, then after his death in 97, uh, contributed that foundation mightily to infrastructure, to scientific infrastructure in, in Israel. Uh, he, as a Spinozist, anything that I asked him, he always would think, what would Baruch have said? And Baruch is Baruch Spinoza, of course. And in order to relate to Baruch, I then studied the ethics of Spinoza. I never regretted it because it paid off mightily again. And uh, that, was our initial, that was our initial support. Now the anecdotal part of it, that this, uh, this donor uh, in the 70s, uh, a businessman, a financier, was the partner of another renowned financier, namely Bernard Madoff. And when he died, or before he died, he made a provision that all the funds would be invested with Bernard Madoff, and the rest is history, so you know, you know what happened. 
But coming back to the, to the Hebrew University, uh, the initial gift was for five, for five years. After five years of the existence of this, of this center, uh, we had to come back to the foundation and ask for additional five years. And then I was equipped by letters, Kenneth Arrow, and many others. And uh, any president of any university would wish to have such letters of recommendations uh, praising uh, projects, events that happened at his university. That was, of course, easy, and we got the grant. Later, that foundation was very generous to us in addition to the, to the funding when uh, Daniel Kahneman uh, was awarded the Nobel Prize, and later again when Johnny Aumann received his Nobel Prize, so that was secured. Uh, but in retrospect, when I look at these two events that started with academic initiatives at the university, supported wholeheartedly from the very top, the president, Joram Ben Porat, it, nothing at the university can happen without a very, very clear, strong support by the president. Uh, there were other attempts to establish similar frameworks. None of them succeeded. For example, take the phenomenon of environmental research. There is the research of ecosystems, there is the research of the faculty of, in the Faculty of Agriculture. There is research in physical and historical geography. And of course, in the School of Law and in Social Sciences, there were several attempts, sporadic, episodic attempts, to do something similar in that case. And there were other, in other cases, it never succeeded. So these two are very, are unique examples in my view, they are great success stories. When I uh, presented my farewell address to the Board of Governors at the end of my service in office, uh, these were the two events which I highlighted as the most, in my view, most important, most empowering, and most rewarding achievements of those days. So thank you very much. I'm happy that we are celebrating it now.